Hello. So I could have named this video The First Four Waves or Playing for Scuttle, but I went with How to Lane with Katarina because that's what I originally set off for, and I do believe your laning will significantly improve once you start thinking about what I'm going to talk about in this video. I've talked to some high level Katarina players and watched plenty of replays. It's clear that there are many mistakes right at the start of the game. The goal of this video is for you to look at your own replays and be able to identify what happens wrong in the first four ways of the game. Then you can start applying it to your own matches right away. Before we even talk about Katarina, we need to talk about the junglers. To start us off, in this game we have Hecarim versus Karsis. Karsis is a champion who really likes to full clear. On the other side, I would say a champion like Nunu would be there. Nunu is a champion who wants to do three or four camps into a gank. Most other champions fall somewhere in the middle. So the match starts and we can see that the enemy bot lane appears right away. We don't even need to move our camera. It's obvious. We know that both junglers start at topside and are now going to likely full clear down with Scuttle. Then a fiesta is going to happen. So we're pretty safe mid lane until then. You can also choose to check the health and mana bars of the enemy bot and top laners. If they have some missing, it's because they leashed. Now the lane actually starts. Your opponent will probably push and that is completely fine for most ranks and most matches. Katarina usually cannot contest a wave level 1, so we're going to let Azir push. It will make it easier to kill him if he is far up in the lane. I have some of our goals written on the side for us to think about. We've already talked about the junglers and we know what is going to happen. We know Azir does not have barrier and if we have a chance to kill Azir, Karsis will not come because he is full clearing. We're letting him push for the first wave. Our only goal is to queue the first three melee minions and then farm whatever we can while taking as little poke as possible. Wave 2, the size of the wave is going to be different depending on how the enemy pushed. Katarina can't do anything level 1, so the wave state is all on the opponent. You're just trying to make the best out of the current situation. If the wave isn't too big, you could try getting level 2 first before the opponent. You get level 2 off the first minion in the second wave. In this match, it wasn't reasonable to try that or to look for a trade. It's not worth trying to send the wave against Azir at this point either. So Hublet just continues farming and avoiding poke. On wave 3, it is still way too big, so Hublet continues farming and avoiding poke. We cannot ward, but we don't need it. You get level 3 on the second melee minion in the third wave. A lot of the time, the opponent will get baited into poking you under tower. Here, Azir spawns a soldier and then queues Katarina. Hublet sees this and then goes all in on him. Before we watch this, we gotta remind ourselves of what we were thinking. Wave 1. Both junglers start at topside and are clearing down the scuttle. Right now, Karsis is at Krugs and there is no way he can help. We know Azir took teleport and is vulnerable to an all in. Overextending here is completely safe. Warding doesn't even matter. Even pushing in afterward is safe. We can see that the Fiesta bot lane still happened and it's great to know that despite it not really affecting Katarina directly this match. Next replay, top shows up right away so we can assume Viego started bot side. Tracking the jungler will be harder this match because Viego doesn't necessarily just full clear. Sure he could but it is likely he just does 4 or 5 camps then looks to gank or walks over to scuttle. Echo also started bot side, so they will pass into each other. We'll see what happens. Nux has barrier this match, so we need to be wary of that. But if you dodge her Q, it's likely that you can still kill her if she is too far up in the lane. I like Cat standing outside of vision here. If the enemy mid shows up right away and sees the juicy waves just sitting there, it's likely that he starts pushing and doesn't position aggressively to poke you level 1. If they don't push, you can just walk up and queue the first few minions for free. It's going to be hard to do anything early, especially because of Bard's little healing stations that he booed down for Lux. Next wave, it's hard to get level 2 before her, so we just continue farming and wait for the third wave. The issue with the enemy having too many minions is that they can crash it into your tower on the wave that Skittle spawns and you won't be able to help. But Lux begins to finish her slow push and shoves it in so Cat cannot help top Skittle on the next wave. Viego could approach Skittle or gank around 250 if he doesn't full clear. But even after Lux controls the minion wave well, 
Echo concedes top scuttle and ganks mid, but Lux stepped up too far anyways. Cat could have likely killed her or popped her summoner spells without help. In a different game, Echo could have gotten spotted and Lux would have been able to move first with her priority in lane. Sure it worked out this match, but hopefully you can see how getting pushed under tower on the third and fourth wave while the enemy junglers are passing into each other is a recipe for disaster. But well, watch a couple replays where Katarina was not so fortunate. So wave one, the top laners are fighting each other, so we can assume the enemy jungle started bot with our jungler. Here's what I'm thinking. In the first example, Karsis is going to full clear most of the time. If we get offline, the guys in the middle can change their clear to punish us. Nunu on the other hand, is not going to full clear. That boy is coming to us if we give him the opportunity. Nunu doesn't full clear. There's a possibility that he ganks level 2, but if we're letting the opponent shove and not appearing in lane until we can queue the first 3 melee minions, then we would be safe. Silas is a matchup where you could challenge them and push, but given that they have Nunu and our jungler is probably going to full clear, I'm not too excited about pushing. Katarina kind of matches the push here, and then Silas uses his E, so Kat looks for a quick trade. Katarina actually started E, which is something you can do sometimes. Silas has Ignite and Fleet. He's going to negate some of our poke, but it would be much harder to win an all-in if he had Conqueror. Second wave, Nunu could do a 3 camp clear and gank the boss side, but we're safe from that. He will likely clear 4 camps, then gig a lane, so that they can help him with Scuttle. As we saw from that Viego game, a 4 camp clear will mean he's going to be a threat around 250. Wave 3, we know Nunu isn't going to full clear, and he's going to gank somewhere on this wave. Ideally, you ward at the start of the wave, but Katarina was pushed in, so she couldn't really ward. Getting crazy on this wave with Nunu is risky. This would have been a good trade if it wasn't obvious that Nunu could come. We know Nunu is topside now and that our top isn't ginkable. So it shouldn't be a surprise when Nunu comes rolling in. I'm pretty sure this caught the Katarina by surprise because she played it kind of funny. But who knows because he didn't reply to my message. I think we have a great idea of what we're looking for. So let's speed through some replays. Both jungles start bot. They will pass topside and will probably fight over top scuttle. Corky shoves. We avoid poke. Corky wards on the third wave. He feels safe and wants to poke cat and he dies for it. It would have just been a good trade but Corky gets greedy and wants some action. The fight topside does happen and the TP only works because they didn't see it. Next we have two rise replays. There's a scuttle fight in both of these replays, but one cat loses half of her HP for one minion. So the scuttle fight is weird, but luckily it works out. The next cat avoids poke and gives up minions. Because of it, she's in a much better spot to help out on scuttle crab. The biggest weakness of getting shoved in is when the enemy laner times their shove with the enemy jungle invading. It will usually be on the third wave onto your raptors or on the fourth wave onto scuttle. It's an absolute nightmare when your jungler won't give up the camp and you're forced to leave the wave. If you leave the wave, the fight has to go well or you're in a terrible spot. Until you're in higher ranks, opponents won't do this on purpose. Now we're gonna go over more mistakes and more replays. It's really easy to find a dumb mistake that shouldn't happen once you know what to look at. I urge you to look at your own replays. I have looked at my own and yikes bro. I'll show an obvious mistake, then I want you to guess the rank. This cat queues from melee range and gets all three minions, then takes the Q auto from Lucian. Diamond three. So this one, I can understand the thought process behind it. You want to ward to see the jungle's clear path, but it's not like you're going to often have priority in lane over the TF. The Jarwin isn't going to invade Raptors. The worst part is Senna seeing you place the ward. Vi just walks over and clears the ward, and the ward has done nothing. Graga shows topside, and we know Vi started bot. We have no idea if Raptors are still up or not. This rank is master. We started the lane and instantly got Eid. Nara wave is screwed, 
and we won't be able to farm safely. Go to. We start the lane and trade cues with Lucian. We're too far up in the lane and cannot get back without taking too much damage. Cat does the walk of shame around raptors to get back to lane. Diamond 1. We start the lane and Cat thinks she's out of vision, but she's not. I could end it here, but the first three minions are very interesting. Cat cues in melee range and Akali cues the wave when she could have hit both Cat and the wave. Silver 2. Sitting out of vision encourages the push, and I do like that idea. Here's the mother heart ease the wave, and then walks up to auto attack the cat twice. He takes more damage from the minions than cat does from Malzahar. So this was perfectly fine, and is a good trade from Cat Arena, even though she didn't really do anything. It will make it a lot easier to kill him, because he has taken damage, and he is pushing. Code 3. We walk to the way for no reason and take an E auto attack from Lux. Plat 3. On to the second wave. We know that level 2 is earned off the first minion in the second wave. If you cannot get level 2 first, you need to respect the enemy's level 2. Cat gets level 2 and kills Galio. He does even flash. Bronze 1. Here Katarina does back off when Echo hits level 2. But then she walks back up and Echo simply jumps on her. She loses half her HP from this. Challenger Katarina in this clip jumps in while they're both level 2, but just look at the minions. She's getting hit from 4 of them. You can do this against a mage who is on cooldown, but not against Yasuo. Silver 1 Wave 3, most mistakes came down to mechanical misplays or lack of jungle tracking. This was both of them. I don't really care if the kill wasn't super clean, that's something we can all try to improve on. We know Hecarim started top and he hasn't showed on the map, so he's clearing Scuttle that spawns on 315, so he's in the bottom river and he's going to come gank us if we do anything crazy. So diving at 340 means Hecarim can come and clean up the mess even if we do live. Hecarim is behind Pike and he doesn't show up, but it should have been obvious that someone would come and show up. We could have also opted to ward before we dove because we know Hecarim's on scuttle at 315. Bronze 1. Way 4, some mess happened. You can see Yon go back on his E and he is far in the jungle. Katarina has enough time to QEW the wave to shove and recall. Because there is no way she can continue laning here. But she doesn't shove the wave, she sticks around and dies. Gold 3. Here Cat played the lane pretty well. The junglers are passing into each other and she is in a spot to help. The wave is in a decent spot, but then she uses Q on the wave and it starts to push. There is a chance the wave would have pushed anyways, but you'll see why this Q is for sure the nail in the coffin for this wave. The scuttle works out, which is cool, but Cat's wave is slow pushing, her farm is dying, and then Victor is probably pretty happy when he comes back and realizes he hardly missed anything. He's actually up 30 farm to 12, and Katarina has shut down gold. That's kind of disgusting. Gold 3. Your lane is important, and you should consider what you're giving up before you randomly run to these scuttle fights. They are definitely a risk versus reward that you need to consider. So everything we've talked about so far applies to when the enemy pushes, which can happen in most games. With this information, you can realistically try to set up early kills. I really want to hammer in the idea that it comes down to the opponent shoving, you know where the junglers are, the wave is in a good spot, and you either run down your laner with the long lane you've set up or you're available to play around scuttle. This is the main concept that can happen in most games. What we haven't talked about is plainly, how do I kill this champ? How do I kill Yone? There's no secret. It comes down to the wave, enemy's positioning, levels, cooldowns, the jungler, how well each side plays the all in her trade. This all in was kind of funny because the tower shot the minion that gave Cat level 3. But a Diamond 1, Diamond 2 Yone didn't back up and respect Cat, so he died. Sometimes you just have to go for it and know your limits. Hublid knows that he's safe, and with Last Stand here, it's a kill. Or at least a good trade. He had just enough damage to kill Azir here with E auto attack. It's not always a kill. Sometimes it's just a clean trade because you dodged a key skill shot. Once you start thinking about Scuttle and how the wave is positioned, you'll start thinking about other things. Scuttle spawns at 315. After the first clear, 
the junglers are likely to clear in the same direction. What does that mean for the team and when should that happen? When does the second blue buff spawn? Dragon? Rift? The next scuttle? What do you want to do to prepare for these objectives? Once you start thinking about scuttle, you'll start thinking about all of these other things and that will help your laning well beyond the first four waves. I just wanted to take a second to say, if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. It's much appreciated and will help me make more Katarina content. I've given the main info that I wanted to cover so far. I could end the video right here and I did consider making this a different video. The whole mindset and strategy around letting the enemy push is way different than if you wanted to push. Letting the enemy push will give you consistent results. This is because Katarina's laning phase is exploitable. She's great at punishing mistakes. Katarina wants a long lane to run down the opponent and this whole game plan of letting him push just comes together with what Katarina wants to do. I'll not talk about Katarina shoving or being forced to shove. So we start the lane. We have a ward on the enemy red. Fiddlesticks is doing both red and raptors at the same time. We'll see the red icon disappear shortly. Our jungle started red and both side lanes showed up right away. Based on the other replays we've watched, you would think the junglers pass to the opposite sides of each other, but that's not what happens. Echo is a matchup where we could choose to contest the wave early on and push. This Echo is a letting Katarina push. Next wave, Kane evades the blue. He gets pinged by the enemy. A ward in the top river at this time is very common at higher ranks, so that's likely where he got spotted. Fiddle 6 can choose to go to his blue or Kane's blue. Fiddle's bot lane has Pryo, despite his mid not having it, so he's likely fine. Katarina being in control of this wave gives her more options to help her jungler, just in case something happened here. Nothing really happened. Katarina continues looking for trades while making Echo pop his potions and waste his mana. On this wave, we should expect Fiddlesticks to finish Kane's blue, then possibly get more camps or look to gank before Scuttle. We can see that our jungler has finished his buff and Fiddle's blue plus Grump, so we could lean towards the top side of the lane to remove the threat of Fiddlesticks ganking, but even in the middle of the lane, Fiddlesticks isn't much of a gank threat. What actually happens in this Grandmaster game is Fiddlestick dies to our team's blue. At this point, Junko is in a good spot and Cat has a CS lead along with Echo using most of his potions. Pushing early removes a lot of kill threat, but you can CS the wave pretty well and your jungler has the option to invade since you can follow and you will always be available to help on Scuttle. This game, our jungle starts spot and we can see Kai'Sa show up right away. So we can assume the enemy jungle started top. The junglers will likely trade scuttles. Jarvan and Rek'Sai typically do not full clear, so they will be looking to do a few camps into a gank. Some nonsense happen and Anivia is missing some HP. Anivia is letting Cat push because she really doesn't want to be far up in a lane against Katarina Jarvan. This can also give Rek'Sai a chance to gank Katarina. Cat is hovering topside to avoid being ganked and is dodging Anivia stun with her E. A lot of the time, going even on Katarina is completely fine. As long as Katarina avoids the bottom side of the lane so she cannot get ganked and shove the wave into the tower, then she should be fine. Kat has a lot more minions here than Anivia and Rek'Sai is approaching bot scuttle. We could recall here, but the slow push back to our tower would be way too slow. Staying doesn't feel too great either because Rek'Sai is bot lane and can be a threat with our wave pushed in this hard. We could have pretended to recall and see if Anivia pushes the next wave into us. We could choose to roam bot or top side. Bot is riskier because it would be a 3v3. It's better to go top here and 3v1 the enemy Gragas. You often want to roam on the side your jungler is on. Maybe they don't need our help, but it's for sure free if we do decide to go. If you want to learn more about freezing, bouncing waves, and how to manage and read minion waves, then Pro Guides has a great video on this. There are plenty of other good videos on minions, but I'll give a quick explanation. To bounce a wave, you can keep the first wave in the middle. Second wave, you want to start getting a minion advantage. Then you can shove on a canyon minion wave. Canyon minions come in every three waves for the first 15 minutes. This is a pretty extreme example because there's no laner, 
but even then this giant wave takes a good piece from the wave that we want to push into us. The minions are even, but it's closer to the opponent's side, so that wave will push into us before our wave reaches it. Without touching anything, we can just see that it will push into us. This is how you pull the wave. Once we get the minion pushing into us, we can freeze it on our tower by always having less minions than the opponent, but not too many minions. Here you might have to thin the wave. I hope you enjoyed this video. Big thanks to Category 5, Catastrophical, and Corrupt Hope for helping me with this video. Links to their Twitches will be in the description if you want to check them out. Thanks for watching.